All right, folks. Today we're going to talk about um, resistance in Ohm's law. All right. Um, and when we talk about resistance, we're talking about electrical resistance, resistance to the flow of electricity. All right. So again, we're going to make a comparison to the flow of electricity to the flow of water. All right. So how do you increase the resistance flow of water? How do you make it harder for water to flow through a hose? All right. You can make the hose or the pipe smaller. All right. You can do that by crimping the hose. That makes it less area for the water to travel through. It makes it more difficult. You put your thumb in front of part of the nozzle and not as much will be able to get through. If the flow resistance to the flow of water increases, what happens to the overall current? What happens to the amount of water that flows? It goes down. So you increase resistance, current goes down. That's an inverse relationship. So this opposition to the motion of charge of electrons moving through a conductor, moving through a wire, is called resistance. Okay, And the factors that affect resistance through a circuit, um, there's several different times. One is the type of metal. Different metals have different resistances, right? Some are better conductors than others. If you have good conduction, the resistance is less. Like gold and silver, conduct electricity, conduct electrons better than like aluminum, but they're all very good, right? The next other factor, length of the wire. The longer your wire, the more resistance you're going to have. That just makes sense, right? Because you have to push the electrons through more things. Then there's the thickness of the wire, okay? If it's a thicker wire, there's less resistance, which again, I think makes sense. Think about a, a pipe. If I have a really thick water pipe, um, more water can get through more easily. Same thing here. If I have a very thick wire, more electrons can fit through and go through pretty easily. Okay. And then the last one is one we're not going to talk much about at all, but it's temperature. Right? The, when a wire gets warmer, it actually has less resistance. And my lights went off, but I'm going to continue talking. Um, all right. So resistance is measured in ohms, named after a physicist named George Ohm who uh, discovered a lot of this relationship between um, between current and resistance. Okay, it's measured in ohms, and the symbol we use is the Greek letter omega. It looks a little bit like a horseshoe. You just kind of draw it kind of like that. Okay. Um, we don't use O because that would look weird. Like if I told you it was 9 ohms, and you put 9 O, that looks like 90, right? It said you write 9 ohms like that. Okay, so electrical resistance is kind of like friction in the wire. You know, it's 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 the you know different things in the wire getting in the way of the electrons, right? And one of the end results of that is warming, right? And electrical resistance can cause heat, right? And if if there's enough current flowing, it can actually cause it to glow. Okay, if you have an electric oven or an electric stove, you see that all the time because the electricity goes through those what we call the burners. And they glow and get so hot that they're able to cook. Okay, um, that's why we use a thin wire for a light bulb, right? The light bulb is, you know, the the filament inside there is so small that it gets hot real fast, so it glows and creates light. Okay, so wires in themselves typically have very low resistance so they have a little bit of resistance and if you run enough current through them you feel them get hot okay resistors which you kind of see some pictures of here are designed to have a specific resistance these little bands of color kind of tells us if we know the if we know what the code is we can actually tell what type of resistance resistance it is from reading that okay they're designed to have a specific amount of resistance and it reduces the current or controls the amount of current in that circuit. Okay. A potentiometer is a resistor that is variable that can change, right? Um, if you've ever had a dimmer switch, when I turn a dimmer switch on, it adjusts the resistor. And if you want it to be, if you want your light to be bright, you turn the resistance down and you turn it one way. If you want it to be um, dimmer, you know, you turn the, the dimmer switch or the resistor the potentiometer the other way, and it gives you um, 
more resistance, less current, and more light or less light. Okay, then we're on the light. Speed adjustment on the fan, high, medium, and low, adjusts basically how much current goes into the motor. Volume adjustments on the TV is, is a is one of those. So there's some there are some pictures of some potentiometers right there. All right, resistance in your body. All right, when your skin is dry, you have a resistance of 500,000 ohms, which is a lot of ohms. Very little electricity flows through it. But when your skin gets wet, it can reduce to as much as to as little as 100 ohms. All right, so this is why it's dangerous sometimes to work, you know, to do stuff in the bathroom when you're dealing with electricity, because if your skin's wet, you are much more susceptible to getting um, current to go through you that's much higher than what's safe. And so that's why you typically try to be really careful in the bathroom when you're dealing with um, electri electricity, like uh, blow dryers and things like that. All right, so make sure you write this down in your notes, right? Or write, write this statement down somewhere too, write this statement down. Um, I don't think there's a place for it in your notes, so you may want to add a line on it in Google Doc. Or if you just want to write this down on a separate sheet of paper or where there's a spot in your um, notes, you can do that. But it just says, it states that for certain materials, mainly metals, the current is produced, the current that is produced in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit. Okay, in other words, if I up the voltage, if I use more batteries or a bigger battery, my current's going to go up. But if I put more resistors in there, more light bulbs, then the current's going to go down. All right, the equation is officially I is equal to V over R, but more normally it's written as V equals I times R. All right. In our study of electricity, this is probably the most important equation that we're going to use. And you will use it a lot. All right, so let's look at some examples. Okay, the resistance of a steam iron is 19 ohms. What is the current in the iron when it is connected across a potential difference of 120 volts? All right, so V is equal to I times R. V is 120 volts equals I times 19. And so we saw for I divide both sides by 19. And we get 120 divided by 19 equals... Thirteen point three amperes. Okay. Now, a couple of things. When you talk, when you see the word potential difference or potential, all right, that's the same thing as voltage. Basically, potential difference. What? How a battery pushes electrons? Does it create a difference in electric, a difference in potential energy between the positive and the negative, and that pushes the electrons through. So when you see this word potential difference, it's the same thing as voltage, okay? And so V is voltage, I is current, R is resistance, right? And I'm not sure if I said that earlier, so we're going to go back real fast and make sure that we have that. All right, so current is 13.3 amperes. Example two, right? this time a typical color television, and this is an older TV, um, draws 2.5 amps of current when connected across a potential difference or voltage of 115 volts. What's the effect of resistance of the circuit? So V, oh, we start with V equals IR. V is 115. I is 2.5 times R. And we can solve easily for R. 115 divided by 2.5 gets me 46 ohms. All right, so what would happen to the current if the resistance in my circuit was doubled? So let's look at that. Remember how we do this? We write out the equation, right? What happens to the current? If the resistance is double. So we're going to assume that the volt, that this stays the same. So we're going to put a one over that. All right. And if the resistance is doubled, so I put a two over that, 
what would I have to do to the current in order to make this little equation work? 1 is equal to what times 2? And of course, that would be half. Because if I double the resistance, my resistance goes up, my current has to go down. And vice versa. If my current goes down, my resistance goes up. So the current is going to change by one half times. It's going to get one half less of what it was. Right. And then how would the current change if the voltage doubled? So this time V equals IR. This time R doesn't change. This stays the same. So we're going to put a 1 there. And if I double the voltage, what has to happen to the current to make this equation work? Of course, this would have to be 2 because 2 times 1 is 2. So this time the current would double because voltage and current are directly proportional. If I double one, I double the other. Pretty straightforward. All right, so um, practice. Go back one. Practice your um, Ohm's Law problems today. Okay. Um, tomorrow, we are going to continue practicing. We're going to meet as a group. We're going to look at a couple more of these, make sure everybody's comfortable with them. Um, and you're going to finish. You're going to finish going through the practice problems and do you're going to work on your learning your lab check tomorrow on the lab from monday um right and then you you know you'll have the rest of the class period to, to finish everything else that you need to um, and we're going to have a learning check on friday over this material and probably start the next little section all right have a great day